Hello and welcome to Keeping Your Cool, Thermal Considerations for TI Analog Products. This is part two of a four-part series entitled The Temperature. I am Matt Romig from TI's Analog Packaging Group. In this series, we're looking at four common thermal questions that um, we oftentimes are discussing with our customers. And this is part two entitled The Temperature, and we will look at how to calculate the temperature of a device on a PCB. The short answer is to get as close to the die as possible. So a thermal sensor on the die itself is ideal because we're measuring the temperature of the die itself. There's nothing else in between there, but it's not always practical. Some components support this, and for the components that do support it, there's oftentimes some calibration involved in, in getting that temperature measurement. So while this is recommended, it's not always practical to do. The most common method, and the method that we oftentimes recommend and, and help our customers implement, is to measure the temperature on the top of the package. So if you see in this diagram here, um, you'll see a typical package component. And what we're talking about is measuring the temperature on the top, which is oftentimes referred to as TC for T case or TT for T top. And once you've measured that temperature, um, which you can do with a thermocouple or an IR camera, um, there's other ways to do that, then you can use this simple equation here to calculate the junction temperature. So the junction temperature is equal to the case temperature, which you just measured, added to the dissipated, total dissipated power, which um, you can estimate from the input and output parameters, or you can uh, use the data sheet recommendations or guidance on that, and multiplied by the psi JT parameter, which you should be able to find in the component data sheet. There's detailed advice on these procedures, for example, taking the measurements or how to use this parameter or this equation uh, in this TI applications note. The next method, which works very similarly, but is, is not quite as uh, accurate and is oftentimes recommended when the case temperature is not accessible, is to essentially do the same thing but using the board temperature. So you measure the board temperature near to the device, and this is defined in the applications note where and how to take that measurement. And you use a similar equation using a parameter called PsiJB, um, which refers to the board temperature and should also be available in the component data sheet. And again, there's advice on this in this applications note. The last resort for estimating the device temperature should be using calculations which involve the ambient temperature or which involve the theta JA parameter and that equation or terms like industrial temperature or commercial temperature. And the simple reason for that is that those are quite the opposite of the title of the slide. Those are as far from the die as you can possibly get. And there are a lot of um, resistances, thermal resistances and contributors involved that are between the ambient and the junction temperature, which can affect the junction temperature. So now I'd like to um, deep dive a little bit more on how to make that case temperature calculation and some of the common terms used there. So specifically, many of you have probably seen the terms psi JT, or even more of you have probably seen the term theta JC. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what those mean and how those are used. Um, very simply put, and the purpose of these parameters, psi JT is created and to be used for measurements in real systems. Theta JC, on the other hand, is um, defined and best used for estimates of theoretical systems. I realize that's not always the case, and oftentimes theta JC is used for measurements in real systems. And I'd like to talk a little bit about why psi JT is the better parameter to use for real systems. And that's oftentimes the usage that uh, customers are looking for, like we talked about on the previous page, to measure the uh, top temperature of the device and use that to estimate the junction temperature. So first, let's look at how psi JT and how theta JC are measured when those values are created and published by the component supplier. So here you see a diagram of how those are, are measured and set up. Uh, let's look first at psi JT. So psi JT is looking at the case temperature and the junction temperature of the component, um, but in a, in a equivalent or fairly realistic setup. So we've seen from modeling and from measured data and from thermal theory that most of the heat dissipated by a component flows through the board, either directly down to the board, depending on the package construction, or out the leads on the side. And then from the board, it's subsequently convected or radiated to the ambient. Very little of the heat actually flows through the top of the component. The exception to this is when there's a uh, external heat sink or chassis connection, something like that, to pull more heat out the top. 
So psi jt is essentially taking the component and modeling it or measuring it in a, in a representative real system and looking at the temperature difference between the top of the component and the junction. The alternative is theta jc, and theta jc is defined um, and is measured using a copper plate which is placed on the top of the device which essentially forces um, almost all of the heat to flow through the top. So in this case, in the psi jt case, about 5% of the heat is flowing the top. In the theta jc case, nearly all of the heat is flowing to the top. Um, let me further illustrate by showing the definitions, the equations, and um, what the resistor networks look like uh, because I realize many of you are coming from an electrical background and this will probably, these type of analogies often help with understanding it. So the first thing to note is that theta jc and psi jt are fundamentally defined by the same terms. The temperature difference between the junction and the case divided by the dissipated power. But again, the difference between them is in the psi jt case, the heat is mostly flowing to the board. And in the theta jc case, the heat is forced to flow up to a copper plate. So the theta jc, and the reason the term theta is used, is this is the true resistance to the top of the package. The psi jt, and the reason the psi or pseudo term is used, is this is not a true resistance. It's more of a, uh, a measurement in an equivalent system. And those of you that are savvy at looking at electrical resistance diagrams have probably already figured out that in the psi jt case, because there are more resistances here, but we're looking at the difference between these two, that psi jt is oftentimes smaller, oftentimes much smaller, of a value than theta jc. And theta jc is the true resistance, so all of the heat or all of the equivalent current must flow through this path, and therefore the temperature difference between the junction and the case will be higher. In this case, most of the heat is flowing through this resistor path, and thus, even though the resistance is the same, the temperature difference between the junction and the top of the case is going to be much smaller. So in practicality, what this means is that psi jt is oftentimes a smaller value, and oftentimes the temperature difference in a real system between the junction and the case or the top of the device is much smaller than we would think, and that we would historically estimate if we were to use theta jc. So I hope that helps with a little bit of an explanation of those parameters, and let me just reiterate as you look at this and, and study this, that psi jt is intended to be used for measurements in real systems. Theta jc is designed and intended to be used for estimates of theoretical systems. So most of the questions we get and most of what we find customers are looking for is they want to estimate the junction temperature of a real device in a real system. And so psi jt, in our experience, is oftentimes the more useful or the, uh, the parameter that our customers are looking for. And, and I would encourage you to use psi jt for those values. I think you'll be happy with the results. One other thing I would like to talk about briefly is industrial temperature as an example. And a lot of these thoughts apply to commercial temperature or to ambient temperature as well. You can feel free to pause the presentation and read through these slides in detail. I'm just going to talk to these uh, at a high level. But essentially, what uh, the history of the term industrial temperature specifically is, it was, it was uh, used in military applications, uh, mill standards, those type of things, was not officially defined. And the measurement procedure was essentially to take a system, an entire system, soak it at 85 degrees C, turn it on, and if it worked for a few seconds, if it functioned, then the entire system and the components on it were considered to be industrial temperature compliant. What uh, we often see in the type of questions we often are um, faced with as component suppliers and what we often see as system designers is the term industrial temperature, similarly commercial temperature or ambient temperature used to mean that the system or the component will operate not for a short period of time at that temperature, but for the entire lifetime if it were theoretically exposed to that temperature the entire time. And as you can see, that's a very different interpretation and would lead to very different results in terms of the um, expected component temperatures and, and thus operation through that lifetime. So without going into to much more detail on that, really the, the point I would like to make is terms like industrial temperature, commercial temperature, and even ambient temperature are not good terms to use when you're estimating the temperatures of systems or when you're designing systems.
two main reasons for that. Number one, they mean different things to different people. So as you see in this slide, some illustrations of some of the historical or common uses of these terms. And secondarily, they're not very precise because they refer to a temperature that is very far away from the component um, and introduce a lot of other thermal resistance contributors. Just to, to summarize then from uh, this presentation and what we covered, there are several ways that we can estimate the junction temperature of a device on a PCB. We looked at some specifics. One of the best and, and the most common and most practical is to measure the case temperature and then use the IJT parameter to estimate the device junction temperature for the component that you're interested in. And then lastly, terms like industrial temperature, commercial temperature, and even ambient temperature are not the best methods to use because of limitation in terms of understanding of what they mean, as well as precision and proximity to the component of interest. So up next in our four-part series will be part three, entitled The Device, where we look in a little bit more detail um, at how semiconductor devices or components are constructed and how they work from a thermal perspective. I hope you'll join us. And if you're looking for more information, you can go to www.ti.com and search for terms like thermal, or you can contact me directly at romig.ti.com. Thanks very much.